you know, out near this sawdust and I keep some scraps, you know, one of these days I'll, in the summer when it dries out, I'll drag all this stuff around front with the bar of the tractor and make a big burn pile and get it burned. But for now, I'll just kind of dump it back here. Both of these cats, and you see one of them peeking around the corner right there still at me. Oh, it ran away. They're always out here. You know, I know they're coming and getting it. And I know like sometimes when I throw trash, a trash bag in the back of my truck to take it off because I don't pay for garbage pickup because again, I don't, it's like, I think it's about $30 a month in the rural area and I don't really make enough trash to dictate that. So I just take it and take it down to the convenience store. They let me throw it in their dumpster and don't charge anything. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, I was in here working and I heard the howling and all and so I came out and just opened the door and put my camera there and they were just oblivious to the fact that I was standing there and they were um, there were birds coming by landing nearby you know normally they'll be all over that stuff but where they where I first saw them when I even before I started living in here um, was out at the barn you know they kind of hang around the barn and chase mice and stuff so anyway a little bit of drama i was out here working on this table here uh tabletop making these breadboard ends that bolt together um drilled and tapped a little plug and to, to uh, a capture nut to capture the uh five eighths bolt that's going in from the end and uh used a router to just make a little slot in it my slots aren't the greatest but it is what it is oh i was going to show you this i cut this out last night um, this is kind of cool. This is for, um, a guy that I worked with like 10 years ago. Um, you know, Facebook being able to reconnect with former coworkers and stuff like that. Um, I worked with this group of people up in central Pennsylvania and, um, this guy's got this unbelievable, uh, man cave in his basement with a very nice bar. And he had me cut this hop out to go in his bar so it's a 38 inch circle there with a hop in the center he sent me a jpeg and i was able to get it uh, converted over into a vector it took me took me a while and um so um anyway i charged him yeah i'm just i'm just telling you guys what i'm charging you know just so you can kind of get an idea and let me know if you think it's too cheap or too good this is eighth inch and i charged him 200 dollars for this which is pretty typical of what i've been you know trying to charge for like something that's a half a sheet or so and needs um you know is not not terribly uh exhaustive on the cut path and all that uh in the range of about 150 to 200 dollars and then um four fields furniture gave me an order for a hundred of these little brackets i think he uses them in to make corners uh for for steel table frames and they end up getting welded in the corner and then i guess he uh, uses that bolt to to bolt up to the um to the tabletop or whatever i'm guessing i don't know but i made i cut a hundred of those out and i just did i nested a bunch of them in the middle of this uh hop but i didn't want to get too many in there you know and get this all warped up where the hop didn't cut out right so i kind of left those spaced out and then i came and added just randomly here and there a few more to get up to the hundred so the tricky part about cutting the little stuff out is fishing it all out of the water. So once I get this sheet up, I'll have to fish all those out of there and I'm sure I won't be able to find them all. I might actually have to drain the table. Um, and it really should be cleaned and I should clean it. Um, I've had it about three or four months now. So, um, and I got those plates coming in. I won that job. I think I mentioned it in earlier in the video or whatever, but Anyway, just an update, it's Sunday. I uh, got a full day was worth of stuff going today. Um, working on this table and uh, a couple other things I wanna do. I wanna make a video for my other channel and I don't really have a full project completed yet. So I had an idea that might be pretty cool. These drill bit videos have been real popular. You know, I don't know what it is about it, but drilling big holes in big thick metal, you know, people wanna see that stuff. So. Um, not quite on that order, but something along those lines. And so we'll get that made and get it posted up today. Probably take a half a day to, to do that. 
get as much done as I can here in the after, in the morning and then uh, switch over and start working on that. All right, guys, I'll get this uploaded and we will uh, call it a day today. I was going to show you this real quick. I was working on these breadboard ends and uh, using some threaded rod. It goes up into the main board here. I don't know, six inches or so. And I got to come back and cut those off. But I made this drill guide and uh, I just had some of these uh, blocks laying around that I'd cut off some previous stuff. So I just uh, stuck it in there and milled out a slot in it and uh, drilled a hole in the center of it. And uh, it's working pretty well. Um, you know, because when you're drilling a hole through multiple pieces and then you've got this long piece here that you can't really fit into anything, got to have some way to get it straight. So, um, so just clamp it on there, kind of hold it and run the drill up in there. So what I thought I'd show you is uh, these, um, this operation I'm doing to drill and tap some little uh, captive nuts. And I'll show you those real quick. Let me flip this over. So that's you up right there, cause I know you don't want to miss me turning this tabletop over. I mean, couldn't have you miss that. So I just took the router and milled a little slot at the end of the hole that goes up in there. Um, I said six inches, I guess it's more like three or four inches. Two inches, maybe, I don't know, three inches, whatever that is. Um, and uh, so I'm using three different machines to do this and to make it as quick as possible. So I'll just show you that real quick. I'm using just a piece, a stick of uh, quarter inch material and that's a five eighths inch hole I'm putting in there. So the first thing I do is uh, go over to the uh, hole punch that's got a quarter inch in there. And I just do this and that way I don't have to, um, you know, do a pilot or anything on the, uh, on the uh, through hole. So we just pop a little pilot hole through there and then take it over here to this drill. And uh, I'm trying to do this one handed, so I don't know if I can actually, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do this one handed, but I'll set the camera over here, find a spot where hopefully you can watch. Let's see. So just uh, put a quick hole in that and there's my brine block uh, imitation here. Trying to see how many chips I can get on one machine without cleaning it. And then uh, once I get that, I come over here to this thing and it's got a little brine block going on with it too. Not, not quite as bad. Um, and this is another one I, I will need to do with two hands so I'll set you up just wherever I can find a spot here. Let's see what I can come up with. Should be in the camera there. So put just a tiny bit of go juice in there. 
on the threads a little bit. Now, this is a tricky one here. I've been wearing a glove with it. Let me grab my glove. Where did I put it? Again, I didn't cut these off into small pieces because, you know, keeping it long lets you use the uh, use it as leverage here. All right, and then um, you see we got that drilled right there. Drilled and tapped. So we come over here to this guy and uh, just gonna nip it off somewhere around there. Let me uh, find a good spot to put you here. No matter what I do, it's gonna vibrate. So um, I'll just set you down here. So again, this is just a rough part, you know, I don't really, I don't really uh, need it to be perfect. It's just something to get a, a uh, 5 8 inch thread on there that I can then drop into the slot. And I still got to come back and route the slots for this end. This one's all done and they're bolted in. You can see I got the flange nuts on there. But you see that, again, just a rough slot there. And um, kind of secure that up. And I got the holes in here uh, oversized so that it allows some expansion and contraction. And um, I did a pretty nice hole uh, on that one, pretty nice slot. That actually could pass as almost professional. These other two, yeah. But again, it's underneath, uh, underneath the table. But I'll say that this is not really for a customer or anything. I'm just mocking it up and the top of it's really what's going to be important to... Uh, get a picture get a video of my table bases i'm about to cut out uh another set that i'm going to chemically remove the mill scale from and so there'll be sort of a silver looking color to go underneath this reddish color and um so yeah i just thought i'd take a minute and show you uh you know how i'm using three stations here to um knock that out and it takes literally just a minute or two to do each one of those all right, guys. See you. See, I got a mess in here.